Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to work with a little bit more difficult products that can be like cream products and stuff like that. Cream so the first thing I'm going to show you how to work with is a really, really mattifying primer and a really good example with one is the Becca Ever Matte Primer. It's so mattifying, it really does keep you matte for a long, long time but it can be very hard to work with because it tends to ball up and peel up in these small balls on your face and that's not a good look. So I'm gonna show you how to work with it. You take a little bit out on your hand, like this, don't use too much of this, that's the first thing, don't use too much. Only like a little dollop size amount like this. Distribute it between your fingers, kinda dab it in like this, press it onto the skin, don't kind of rub back and forth, just dab it onto the skin like this. And generally it's the same with all of these like kind of really silicone primers like the NYX Pore Filler or the L'Oreal Studio Secrets. You don't want to be like rubbing it all over, you want to be pressing it into the pores. So that's the first tip. As for base products, there are products that are really really difficult to work with. One of them being for example the Rodial, Rodial? whatever it's called, airbrush makeup. And that one can be very tricky to work with because it is so heavy, look. It's not coming out of this at all, it's not even moving. And it's so, 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 so thick. I'm gonna show you like how thick it is. It's like this very like thick paste, it doesn't even move on my hand. It's so full coverage, but it can be very, very difficult to work with. One trick that you can use if you're not an oily skin person like myself, you can always mix in a couple of drops of oil. You can actually do that to most liquid foundations as long as they're oil based. Don't do that to water based foundations or silicone foundations that can work, but not water based foundations that will just separate all over your skin and make it look like really bad. But if you are an oily skin person like myself, I would highly recommend actually working in small sections. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Basically, what you want to do is that you want to take a little bit of the rodeal foundation. Don't use too much because these cream foundations tend to be very, very full coverage and it will give you like an awfully cake, cakey look. So I just want to start by dabbing like a few dots here and now I'm going to show you the technique actually to how to work with them. So basically the technique is to use a really dense brush. This one is like a flat top kabuki brush and the way to work with it is to kind of like go into like stippling motions like this. Don't rub, don't like drag it across the skin because you'll just like move the product without it blending in. You want to kind of press it into the skin like this and that will give you like a very very flawless coverage like this and you can see it actually goes like quite a long way once you do this and it actually creates quite a beautiful base as you can see it's blended nicely but that's because of that patting motion like this it's like kind of like pat and drag pat and drag pat and drag so it's like this doop, doop, doop motion i don't know what that sound effect was another thing you guys be prepared to spend a little more time blending with products like these because they will need some love. And the same thing applies to these like really professional heavy duty concealers like this Dermacolor Camouflage Cream. It's the exact same thing I'm gonna show you in fact. You know this one is like so heavy, it's like a really thick paste. But what you wanna do is that you wanna take just a little bit, maybe dot it under your eye like this. Don't need a lot because it's a professional product you know. And don't worry about it drying too fast because you know it really doesn't. You have time to work with this. It's really designed to be worked with. You can mix in oil too and especially under the eyes but I'm going to show you how to do it without the oil. I want to use like this really really dense Real Techniques face brush it's called and the thing about this is like it's really dense so it can really like move some product around and you don't have to really like drag under your eyes you don't have to like rub and drag and like really create like wrinkles for yourself basically you can just basically just dab like this really gently in a dabbing motion kind of work the product into the skin like this. Actually in some certain areas like around your nose you can even use your fingers to kind of like take a little bit of the product and kind of like tap it in like this. Do not drag you know that's really the number one rule with these products. You want to push 
the product into the skin and don't drag it back and forth because it's just going to be streaky and it's not going to go into the skin right. Cream contouring can be another thing that can be really really intimidating but actually it can be looking so beautiful if you just learn the technique right. So taking your cream contour stick, I have this wet and wild mega glow dual ended contour stick as it's called. What you want to do is that you want to start like identifying your cheekbones. Where are your cheekbones naturally and then placing a line just a little bit above that. So if you're looking at your face like this and kind of like sinking it in like this, you can see for me my cheekbones are like right there. So I'm gonna be drawing a line right there. Don't go much further than this, like the outside of your eye. I think that's actually a really good general rule, like the outside of your eye, don't go further than that because it's just gonna look really really unnatural. And also actually on the jawline, you can go directly on the jawline actually, a little bit on the side of your nose. And actually I'm gonna do a little bit under my lip too. And as for blending, I'm gonna be using this same buffer brush. This one is really good because again it's like, that. it's really small and it's kind of really dense so it can really distribute the product right. So I'm just gonna be starting off here and working the product upwards like this. Kind of blending it into the skin and again this tapping dabbing motion it really, really does distribute the product right. And you wanna be doing that until you can no longer see any harsh lines or anything to that effect. Remember to always blend upwards like this. Don't blend downwards. You don't wanna drag your face down. You wanna kinda of push it up. And under my jawline, I kind of actually like to drag it around just a little bit and like blending it in. I'm not going like back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, but I'm kinda of like, lightly tapping my jaw like this. It's actually not even touching almost. Remember that you always want to be blending it into the hairline like this. Don't like stop right before you get to the hairline because then you'll have like a kind of stripe of white and then the tan and that just looks weird. So you want to kind of like be blending it into the hairline like this. And again with these tapping motions it's really like the most important kind of skill you can learn that's to perfect these tapping motions once you learn how to work with cream makeup. On my nose, I really like to kind of squeeze the brush like this. That will make it even more dense. And then just kind of tap that line out. And I kind of kind of take it like this and then I swipe it up like this. And kind of like tap it in that way. Again, like swiping up towards the center of the nose because you don't want to be moving the product down. You want to be moving it up, which will really be like slimming your nose because the closer the lines are to the center of your nose, the more slimming effect you'll have on your nose. So now that I'm wearing like three to four layers of cream contouring, concealer, foundation, all of that on my face, I need to be setting this. This is another really important tip. So basically what you want to be doing is taking your translucent powder and taking your powder puff or another really dense brush like this one and kind of using that same stippling motions to kind of like pressing the powder into the skin like this. This is a really good tip, you know, like press and roll, kind of like press the powder into your skin, which will really set all of these creams onto your face. Another reason why you want to be doing this is that you don't want to be like rubbing the product back and forth because like you've just spent a lot of time, time placing the contour exactly where you want it and you don't want to be rubbing it all over and like kind of mixing it in with the rest of your base. So what I'll usually be doing is just kind of letting that powder sit on top of my face for a few minutes and once it, have, it has been sitting for these few minutes I kind of want to be like just blending it away. Another thing that can be really hard to work with is brow palmades. Actually how to make them work and how to make them look good and especially this elf one because it's like very very thin so you really have to learn how to work with it but once you do you will have I promise you, you will have the brows of your life. So basically what you want to be doing is taking just a little bit of the pomade and kind of like tapping it off on the side. I'm going to see if I can show you here. This one is so dirty. Sorry about that. But look, kind of like tapping it off on the side there, kind of like taking the excess off and kind of like saturating the brush that way. And once you have a little bit on your brush, you just kind of want to be like taking it and running it through your brow like this. Better to start with less and then working it up and working up the pigment. 
uh, as it is with all cream products. Really start with a little bit and work it into the skin and see if you need more. Actually guys, I did show you this on my last video. So um, I'm just gonna do that right off camera and I'll be right back. Finally, the last product that can be a little bit hard to work with is one of these dry shampoos which has like a really distinctive white cast. Basically what you wanna be doing is that you wanna be taking your can kind of spreading it into the roots of your hair like this. Just into the roots, don't go into the top, just distribute a little bit on the roots and then kind of like wiggle it out like this. So guys, I hope this tutorial kind of helped you to kind of work with a little bit more difficult products and I'm looking forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye bye guys.